Liam placed her body in the bathroom and left the house quickly so that he could show up for work on time. Co-workers reported that Liam was always on time for work, and his clothes always looked very clean. However, on this day, he showed up for work looking very disheveled and rushed, almost like he was nervous. At this point, Liam had asked Preston to go to Sarah's house and hide her body somewhere. After Liam's arrest, Preston would agree to testify against him in order to get a reduced sentence. Preston also showed the police how he dragged Sarah's body into the backyard and hid her behind a group of bushes. From a neighbor's security camera, you can actually see a figure moving around in Sarah's backyard at the time that Preston would have been there to do this. After work, Liam met Preston back at the house and they loaded her body into her own car. Liam sat Sarah up in the passenger seat and even buckled her seatbelt to make it look like she had just fallen asleep in the car. He knew that there was a security camera on a house nearby, and Liam knew Sarah so well that he backed her car out of the driveway in the way that he knew Sarah always did. Liam drove Sarah's car, with Preston driving close behind, to the bridge that went over Shark River. It was there that Liam and Preston threw Sarah's body into the river and drove away in Preston's car. After everything that Liam had done to get Sarah's money, he only ended up getting $7,000 out of the reported $100,000. The money was old and brittle, and he knew that he would have a hard time even getting a bank to accept the $7,000 in cash that he had obtained. The two of them buried this cash at Sandy Hook and planned to dig it back up once the heat died down in Sarah's case. In 2019, the trials for Liam and Preston started. Preston cooperated with police and pled guilty to robbery, conspiracy to commit robbery, disturbing or desecrating human remains, tampering with physical evidence, and two counts of hindering apprehension. Observers in the courtroom believed that Preston seemed remorseful for his crimes, but he actually lied under oath that his father had sexually abused him as a child. He later recanted this in court and said that he lied in order to receive more sympathy from the jury. Besides the obvious confession tape, the prosecution had a substantial amount of evidence against the boys. A Walmart employee testified that only one set of walkie-talkies had been purchased between the months of November and December, and these walkies were purchased by Liam and Preston to communicate on the night of the murder. The police also had Liam's phone records that matched Anthony's story about the two of them hanging out on Thanksgiving Day. The security camera owned by Sarah's neighbors also helped give credibility to Preston's timeline of events because the police observed Preston in the backyard and Liam driving the car away at the time that they would have been disposing of Sarah's body that night. The trial for Liam and Preston was almost ruined when one of the jurors posted on Facebook and said, quote, sitting on the jury, LMAO. Liam's defense tried to get a mistrial for this post, but the judge denied the request. Because of his cooperation with the police, the murder charges against Preston Taylor were dropped and he ended up receiving 18 years in prison. Liam continued to plead his innocence throughout the trial, and his defense claimed that the taped confession was really just an audition for another one of Anthony's movies. However, nobody in the courtroom bought that story. Liam McAtasney was found guilty of murder, felony murder, conspiracy to commit robbery, robbery, hindering the apprehension of himself, tampering with evidence, and disturbing or desecrating human remains. He was given life in prison with no parole, plus 10 years. Sometimes you think you have great and loyal friends that would never intentionally hurt you. But sometimes, those are the ones that you have to be the most careful around. Sarah Stern had known Preston and Liam almost her entire life, but they still betrayed her for such an insignificant amount of money. Although it's always believed that Liam killed Sarah for the money, I think that it went a lot deeper than that. The way that Liam discussed the murder in his confession tape and talked about her last moments of life, he showed not a single amount of remorse for his actions. Although I think that the money was a factor, I think it was also an excuse that Liam used to finally do something he had always wanted to try. Murder. In the confession tape, Liam says, quote, I don't feel any different. You always think you're gonna try these new things and you're gonna change, but it just doesn't do anything. In 2017, seven months after her death, the family and friends of Sarah Stern had a celebration of life to honor and remember her. There were over a thousand people in attendance, and every inch of the room was covered in Sarah's art. 
If she was still alive, I have no doubts that Sarah would be an art student at that university in Canada, or maybe already in a serious art career. She was extremely talented and remarkably beautiful. Tragically, she placed her faith and her friendship in the wrong people. The body of Sarah Stern has never been found, but the police believe that her body was most likely pushed out into the Atlantic Ocean, and her family might never officially lay her to rest. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening so that you can come back for next week's episode. Missing Souls is a weekly podcast with new episodes releasing every Monday. I love getting case suggestions and discussing the cases I cover, so don't be afraid to reach out and say hi. You can find me on Facebook by searching for Missing Souls Podcast or on Instagram at Missing Souls Podcast. Stay safe and please protect your local artists. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Savannah Robbins, and I still speak for the missing. Mm -hmm.